Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here. Welcome to episode number 34 of my lower league management playthrough in Football Manager 2016 with FC United. And today we're in March and it is that time again, the youth intake. I get excited for the youth intakes. You guys seem to really enjoy them as well. Sometimes I get comments. You guys say it's your favorite yeah, episode of a season <laughs> when I get new players in the youth intake. And youth players have been very important. The regions we've gotten through the first season, don't forget Henry Collins. He's been a regular striker for us. And last season, uh, we got through Sean O'Neill. He's been so far a decent attacking midfield uh, player for us. So we'll just go back and we'll see those players and we'll see how they've done. I've just got it sorted by the ability uh, to get ready to see those players. But anyway, Sean O'Neill came through last season. The intake sees history. He didn't play a game uh, like Collins did when he joined, uh, but he's done so well this season. He's been an important first team player. He hasn't been bad. He hasn't been out of his depth by any stretch of the imagination. He's been like a first-team player, which is excellent. And then with Henry Collins, uh, where is he at right now? There he is. Uh, Henry Collins, you can see he's improving in leadership and off the ball. Leadership, it's very low, but it's improving because he's already playing a lot of football at a young age. He's 18 now. He's finally 18. And look at that. See the first C? That's the season he came through. A different, yeah, a bit different to Sean O'Neill. Uh, he played nine games and scored 11 times. Crazy. Uh, second season, I thought he might have scored a bit more with 11 in nine in the first season, nine games. But then he's gone on this season to score 10. He probably will go close to scoring 16. So he's been consistent. And you can see that he's a quicker striker and good finishing composure. He's got those solid attributes, not too many other higher ones, but he delivers goals. He doesn't smash in goals, but he scores them at a decent rate. Good enough, I suppose, for a striker of his age. But we'll go check out the players for this year. And as you can see, uh, there isn't really too many good players. There isn't anyone good at all. If you look at the first guy, Roger Wood, he may be okay. We'll go in, look, central midfielder. He's actually got 16 passing. I'm surprised from that report uh, for his current ability. Then he's got flair as well. He doesn't have... I suppose he has a batch of lower attributes, but they're penalty taking. Long throws, and there's some that may be important, like heading, free kick taking. But free kick taking, again, if you've already got free kick takers. But yeah, crossing, again, from a center mid, you don't expect to cross too much. But finishing five and first touch five, yeah, maybe a bit of a trouble. But the rest look pretty good, especially mixing that 16 passing with 18 flair. I reckon he can play some good passes. And he's only going to improve. He could potentially improve in those attributes, which are scary, or which is scary. He's only 16, uh, very, very young. His birthday is in December as well, so he's going to be, yeah, 16 <laughs> for quite a few months now. And I guess I can use him, especially being natural in two positions, center mid and center attacking mid, both positions we use. Probably prefer center mid, center attacking mid. You want to be a chance to score goals, provide goals uh, like O'Neill does. But yeah, Roger Wood's definitely a different kind of player. He's worth signing up. And I'm not sure, yeah, how many others I'll sign up, though. It's not the best intake. It's not the worst. We still get a guy that could potentially be in the first team. And then we've got Gavin Bauer. But I don't think he's good enough if you go to report. And again, we've got a lot of other center backs better than him. And with center backs especially, you have to be really good as a youth player. That's where I want my experience to lie, if anywhere. You can have the youth in attack because they've got generally uh, their fresh legs. And yeah, center backs, you generally defenders, I want experience there for the most part anyway. So I won't bother signing him up as well. So that's going to be the only one. And the rest are only half star abilities. And you're going to see they're not really good enough. They've probably got too many lower attributes. Uh, for more for my liking again, Ryan Hughes, just click on him. And yeah, like a lot of low attributes you'll see with these others and maybe some with a bit more potential. Scott Martin will be in the same boat. So we won't be bothered signing them up. So just the one player. But judging his ability, he's got the good passing, good flair as well. So we'll see how Roger Wood, Roger Wood what he does for us uh, once we sign him up. Obviously, yeah, we do got a lot of midfielders. So you got to see how it goes. But I'll give you an update on results as well. And we have got one game to play today we'll do the Corby game because I think uh yeah one game and then the youth intake will be enough or otherwise the episode will be too long and then I'll play through and who knows we'll be in the playoffs or what's the situation gonna be but 
We have been on a bad run, I guess you can say. We were on a good run after the FA Trophy uh, game when we got knocked out. Uh, we won three games out of four. We were unbeaten uh, for those games, uh, for five games, until we lost against Fylde. We lost at home 3-1. That was devastating for me, especially as they weren't doing so well in the league. And we couldn't beat Chorley at home. Then we lost against Chester away from home, which was an important game. So that kind of scares me going into uh, the playoffs because right now Harrogate is on 63 points. Uh, same with Bradford. So it's going to be hard to break them both down. You're going to have to rely on both of those teams to drop. So it's going to be pretty hard to get into that first position for automatic promotion. And even still, I'm going to have to get results to maintain our position in the playoffs, without a doubt. Because 55 points, you see uh, Solihull Moors, uh, they're on 53. And then Boston United, 52. Even Stockport on 51 could still be contending uh, with a few games. Yeah, quite a few games still uh, left for the season. How many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 games. So... A win here against Corby would be important, especially their 21st. Even though it is away from home, I think it's a game we should be winning. So six days away, um, hopefully no injuries, and hopefully we can yeah press on to that game and get the three points that we need. But also, guys, to give you a bit of an update on the transfers, you can see the players that have recently left, you know, Ratchi and Linfield. Uh, but a player that has recently joined on loan is Navid uh, Nazari. I think that's how you say his name. Uh, he's on loan uh, from Maxfields. He's a pretty good player. He's made an impact already, scoring three goals uh, from attacking midfield. Like I said, that attacking midfielder really needs to be a type that can score. But saying that, he's only got four finishing. Decent composure, though. Uh, but I definitely yeah, thought he had some well-rounded attributes. Again, the lower ones are ones that are not really too important, apart from probably finishing and strength. I don't know. You don't expect yeah, your attacking players or attacking midfield kind of types to be strong. You're not going to find yeah too many strong center attacking midfielders. He shoots from distance as well, long shots 10, uh, but he has scored three goals. So he's been an important signing and he's our best attacking midfielder by rating. Sean O'Neill, obviously still very young, but he continues to progress as well. He's got 18 aggression. So maybe he's, yeah, he's that more aggressive type in midfield. So guys, uh, head of youth development, Johnny Wright, has announced that youth candidate Roger Wood has signed a youth contract with the club. So happy he joined. And I can't remember if I showed you this, but we did sign uh, Johnny Wright as a head of youth development. Remember, I had that regen as a head of youth development, uh, but this guy came along. He's only 32. He came off a previous role at AFC Telford as a head of youth development. And you can see there, 14 and 14 for judging ability and potential. So, yeah, hopefully he'll continue to bring through some talent. And who knows how good Roger Wood will be? It's hard to say. Like, his initial ability didn't look too good on the report, but his attributes surprised me. And he's right up there as a central midfielder. Well, I say right up there. He's not out of his depth, I'll say. Especially when you look at his passing attribute. I want to see how much that's affect during a game because that's a class... You see some players in the Premier League with that kind of passing, and some central midfielders in a Premier League team don't even have that. So that's that level, but he just doesn't have the rest of his game. So he's got that kind of quality in him, and with flair as well, he's still a good team, a good team player with that 14 yeah, teamwork. So I think he could potentially, he could potentially play above his ability. But again, we'll have to see, and his potential could improve a lot for the future. I'm not sure what division that could be in. Would it just be a good player in this division? Uh, I guess we'll have to see. Uh, but initially, uh, he looks like a good player. I think good enough, but he could be... I think he'll have his games where he won't do much, but then he could have a few games where he really steps up and yeah, creates and could win points for us. But here, guys, we've got a really important game today against Corby. As you can see, it's been four games. Look, last four games, we haven't been able to get a victory in the league. Two draws, two losses. It's time to get a victory here against a team that's 21st. They haven't had a good season at all, Corby, even though it is away from home. We've got to show we can win this, or we don't stand a chance in the playoffs. And I'm going to say now, it's going to be a really tough task if I don't get promoted. Say if I get into the playoffs and I get knocked out, it would just be like a gut-wrenching feeling. You know what I mean? Like, it will be very hard to get motivated to play the next season. So I think it's a must yeah, it's a must to get promoted. So I want to be going into the playoffs with some form. Who knows? I, it's going to be hard to get first with two teams in uh, fighting for that position on the same points uh, with a few points above us. But 
yeah, I think this is the team uh, we're going to be going with uh, for this game. But I've got to update you on Mohamed Saeed. He's got an injury. It's a broken leg from six to seven months. So he's gone completely. He's not going to play another game for us this season. He's only on loan and I can't really get rid of him. <laughs> like I can't yeah, cancel his contract or anything like that. Obviously, let, let him go uh, from being on loan. Uh, yeah, terminate his contract. Uh, but we do have a really big squad. I need to let go of a few players, uh, most definitely. Maybe a tight low, Rico Gomez. But because of that injury now, Saeed, Gomez could get a look in. If someone like Brooksby or Catton gets an injury, or Wolfenden, yeah, he could at least yeah come onto the bench. Especially Brooksby. Say if Catton gets injured, Brooksby could come left mid. Yeah, yeah, you have to make those rotations. So you've got to keep that in mind as well. But even with the centre-backs, there's a few guys like Ryan Austin hasn't played much. Even Stuart Kerr, I believe his contract runs out at the end of the season. So I'm not sure if I even offer him a new one. Again, it's a case with young defenders. I'm not really sure yeah, how good they would be. So I'm just looking at the team right now as another centre-back uh, that we have Ed Harris, who's going to come back in instead of Ben Clark. Ben Clark, good uh, good morale. It's superb, as good as you can get. But Ed Harris is a bit better player. And yeah, oh, not Tom Brown. Sorry, didn't mean to click on him. Uh, ben Clark, it was right next to him. He's going down a bit physically. Very slow now. His tackling is only eight as well. He hasn't been the greatest in recent times. So... Or any other changes? Because this is such an important game. We need a win or we're going to be dropping down. And I don't want that. Uh, Navid Nasseri is still getting a gig because uh, Sean O'Neill has been dropping in recent games. You know, I've said he's been good throughout the season. But look at that last five games rating. Not very good at all. Henry Collins, not going to be target man. I was giving another player a go there. Um, uh, Duncan Greenwood, uh, the youth player. Another youth player we have who's just been smashing in goals, as you would know. In yeah, youth level, look, 21 goals in 16 starts in under-18s. But Anthony Melbourne's another interesting as well, um, interesting one as well, because he wants to play. He's coming back from an injury, so it's a bit of a problem. He's been unhappy because I haven't played him, but maybe I'll just put him on the bench. Uh, actually, I'll take Sean O'Neill off, and Melbourne need to give him a go. We'll take him off reserve games under-21s. Okay. There we go, because <laughs> I really want to get a victory here, desperately almost, because if we don't, even if we just get a draw here, you don't know, Salah Hull Malls, they win, um, Boston United win Stockport, <laughs> it's not going to be looking good for us, especially if we're not on good form, so we're just going to the next game now and say assertively, I expect nothing but a win from this match to cut our recent ba bad run of results if that makes sense at all. <laughs> it's a bit hard to commentate and read at the same time. Uh, but anyway, there we go. Just say I have faith in you. And hopefully, we'll be able to provide uh, some good football here today uh, for the fans coming along. But it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough now. Simpson with the header does well. No early chance, though. Okay, here opportunity with the throw-in. It's Fifield. Goes back to Harris and now to Phillips. Minahan, Collins. He's there to tap it in and we had to score from that. Collins with his 11th goal of the season. We're loving Henry Collins. He's coming, becoming really a cult hero. I think you guys get disappointed when I don't actually play him. So it'll be interesting how much he does improve because that's the thing. He hasn't really improved majorly in his attributes yet. So I don't know yeah, how much he's going to grow as a player, if he can be a player that can grow and take us up the divisions once we get to like League 2, League 1 and stuff. I don't think he'll still be good enough. I don't think he has that yeah, potential to grow. He's just... That's what it's... When you get the youth intakes at conference level, this low league football, they don't have higher potential. It's really, really rare. I'm pretty sure they're even capped. Like there's like no no possibility at all to get someone like Premier League or Championship quality. But yeah, that's going to be half time. Either way, we do get the lead, exactly what we want. And we'll go assertively into half time. We'll say, don't get complacent. Really important that we hold on to this and even press on and score another goal to make sure we get the points here, not concede a stupid goal late. That yeah, it's, I hate that. <laughs> I really, really hate conceding late goals. So, Brooksby, Nasri, Nothing going to come of that. And once again, Jamal Fifield is having a great game. And there's another update. We'll see what happens here, and I'll just let you know. But McNally, we cannot concede here. 
Oh, we cannot, please. Okay, for now, but they're going to mount another attack. That was a pretty poor shot. It felt like it was a really slow shot. Uh, yeah, I want to go back to our team. It's related to Dan Ball. We haven't been playing him, so it's that case again uh, where he's been really mad. I'll go back to the normal judgment now. Um, the specialized panels. Yeah, that's... Uh, for the under 18s, yeah, from this from, from this way, sorry, uh, especially panels and just the Vitrex, the main one, the skin, and we'll just sort by position. There we go, just have that sorted because you can see the ability and potential anyway. But we'll go back and what I wanted to say on Dan Ball, we'll sort by positions from here also. Uh, Dan Ball, he's requested to leave now, so I'm going to let him go. That's it's difficult, and he's he's listed as a backup player. He, well, before I've put him not needed, he was backup. And that we've been playing him for the season, what, 10 games in the league? What, five starts? Well, no, that's non-competitive, sorry. Yeah, th okay, three starts in the league, seven off the bench. But what can you expect? He was signed as a backup player on his contract. A bit disappointing, but yeah, uh, we'll see if he leaves or not. Well, at least we're giving him what he wants. He wants to be... He wants me to try and sell him. So that's what I'm trying to do by listing him. So if we need to use him, at least his morale will still be okay. But now, let's make this two. Don't give them a chance to come back in this game. Brooksby, finish this. It was straight at Durant. It wasn't a terrible shot, but a bit disappointing that we don't at least get a corner. It was a really good save there to avoid a corner. Uh, by their goalkeeper. So we have to make a change here, I feel, because we need to finish off this game, really. James Catton, yeah, struggling. We don't really have another natural left winger now. Could be a problem. But one thing I'm thinking of doing, I'll just bring on Matty Wolfenden. Because of that injury now to Saeed, I'm back training Wolfenden. <laughs> He's training for his position, keeps rotating through the whole season. Now training the left wing inside forward. So we'll leave it as that, but ideally you think that could be one of his better roles, cutting in on his preferred rights, so we'll make that change, we still need to be looking for a goal, you know Wolfenden, you know he can find the back of the net, but in the last couple seasons, not as regularly, but because we've been getting other strikers and he hasn't been playing striker as much, he's been rotating in different attacking positions on the wing, even behind the striker as well. Uh, we'll make another change, even though things are, I'll push back to standard now, just be a bit more responsible, and we shall go and make a change to, yeah, Navid Nasseri, and we'll bring on Ryan Rainey, and we'll put Jack Phillips there. Again, a bit of a rotation there, and Jamal Fifu, he's had a great game, hasn't he? He's had a great game. So I'm I'm hesitant to drop him, but yeah, Andrew Fox needs some game time. It's oh, it's a hard decision. He's been one of the best players today. But at the same time, oh, yeah, I don't know. I'll keep Henry Collins fit. He scored today, well done. Uh, but also, see, there's so many players that may, they, they need match fitness. So Ryan Rainey and then Malbon, there's a lot more to come from you. He looks happy. He just It's weird for Malbon because he, he just came back uh, from a spell on the sidelines with his injury. So, of course, he's unhappy with not playing him, but he needs that match fitness back. What can I do? <laughs> but most importantly here, we'll go with the team talk, also say passionately and concentrate. Just focus here. Focus. Don't concede a late goal. It's important. I'd like to think I have confidence that we will keep a clean sheet here. Come on, just hold on. Fo okay, there's a highlight. <laughs> I wish there wasn't. I wish there wasn't. Oh, he's offside. I was going to go crazy there because <laughs> this is such an important win. Uh, but well done uh, for making sure uh, that he was offside, I guess. Defense held their line, caught him offside. Well done. It was close. It was close there uh, for us conceding. And yeah, but it was important. Important for us to hold on to the three points there. I'll just say, well done, lads. That was a good win. It was a needed win as well. It was solid performance. Wasn't amazing. I'd like to think we can do a bit more better, uh, create a bit more chances. Well, we still had seven on target, so that's not terrible by any stretch of the imagination. Two click-up chances. It wasn't a bad performance, but I know we can do better against a team like this. But, lads, that will be it for now. We've got a few more games to round off this league season. You know I strongly will be fighting 
for a top five position so he can finish in the playoffs. And you can see we've got those games remaining, uh, seven games. So I hope uh, we can not just finish in the playoffs. Obviously, to me, that's a definite, that's like a minimum. This is a season, this like feels the season we have to get promoted, doesn't it? It just, it feels like that. And if we don't, as I mentioned previously, it'll be really hard to play another season. I'll be really demotivated uh, because we've been so good this season. I don't think we could be much better than this. Uh, like, I'm surprised, like, there's been some other good teams this season, like Harrogate only losing six games. Like, we haven't done much worse than them, have we? Like, our results seem so similar to them. What, seven losses we've got, and they've got six losses, and we've got 13 draws, they've got 12. But, if yeah, the losses and draws are so similar. Like, we've got one more loss and one more draw. Oh, saying it like that, that's crazy. That's the difference between being fourth and first. Oh, so it's going to be a close finish to the season. Wow. And we've still got a game against Harrogate. That's going to be really, really big. Yeah, Harrogate, we've got them all. That's going to be... Maybe I could potentially... It depends how the next few games go. I could maybe show that game. Oh, <laughs> yeah, who knows? We're just going to have to see how it plays out. And Bradford PA, we don't play them. But again, who knows what's going to happen uh, with them again, they're on a different uh, kind of level. They've had a few more losses, but then less draws and more wins. But yeah, it really pains me. Like if we, I'll be, I'll be still fighting for the top position. I'll be gunning to win that game against Harrogate most definitely. But I'll still be a bit, a bit disappointed if we don't finish first this season. As I mentioned, we're not too far away this season in terms of results from Harrogate. It's so similar. I, I didn't really look at that until now. Just one more loss and one more draw we've had. Whew, so close. So close. But season's going to finish really soon. Uh, last episode of this season is going to be very, very crucial, uh, without a doubt. But I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Drop a like on the video if you'd like to see more and you enjoyed with the face cam as well once again. Subscribe if you're new also for daily Football Manager videos. And I'll see you guys in the very next one.